so hello um i'm danielle welcome back to my channel i have a blog called parenting and paper crafts where card making and motherhood intersect well i think my tagline is where motherhood and card making intersect <laughs> okay so i'm back with another video to um, put together a quick card and here we go so i'm going to use my mat for my distress ink blending um, I have my brushes. I'm using Bundle Sage, Tumble Glass, and Shaded Lilac. These are my Distress Ink colors. I have a brush for each um, ink or each shade of ink. I use these brushes um, with colors lighter or darker. Um, and I just uh, stay in the same color family when I'm using my brushes. Then I have Versifying Ink I'm going to use on the Stamps Sentiment. All right, so we have that. I have uh, a white panel. Um, I'm going to cut this down using, and if you saw my last video, I'm using um, a couple of products. I'm using the, the Infinity Dies uh, Nested Shapes for Die Cutting, the rectangle dies. I'm gonna use um, the small one, where is it? Oh, here it is. I'm gonna use this one to cut it down. Uh, I think it's gonna give it about an eighth of an inch border. And I'm gonna use this black panel as uh, to create the border, yeah, right? All right, let me put this over here. I have this die. Let me put these papers here. I, oh, excuse me, not die. Stencil. Simple Stories stencil. Um, it's Simple Vintage Garden District. It has butterflies on it. Yeah, that's the name of it. Um, yeah, Simple Stories, Simple Vintage Garden District. It's a six by six stencil. And I'm going to use that. Now, I haven't experimented, I don't believe, with these colors. Uh, I'm just going to go for it and let's see what happens. Oh, and my stamp sentiment, my sentiment on the card. I think I might use one of these. I'm, work, I'm leaning towards using hello or maybe thanks. Yeah, I have to figure that out. <laughs> so I'm just going off the cuff here. All right, so let me move some of this stuff out of the way. Move this over. Brushes. Okay. In just a second. Put your eyes on them. I don't want them looking crazy in the video here. Okay. So I have my mat here. I'm going to do my ink blending on top of this mat. It's easy to clean up. I can wipe it off. It's good for watercoloring, anything like that. Okay. So. What I would like to do first. Oh, I'm going to get my panel here. Get my panel with the stencil. All right, so I think I want to try to decide what the orientation of the, or where I want to place the stencil. Um, I think I want it going across. Let me cut this all a little bit. Yeah. All right, that looks good. So what I'm going to do, a lot of people usually take their um, sticky or their sticky spray and adhere it down. I'm just going to use this low tack purple tape. Okay, if I can get it here, yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm just going to tape it to the back of the stencil here. Edge right down. Let's try this side. Okay. I think that's good enough, right? Okay. And just for a good measure, I'm going to now adhere it to the mat, just so it won't move around while I'm ink blending. So hopefully that'll stay. We'll see. <laughs> okay, so first, I think what I would like to do is do green, blue, and then purple. So I'm just going to 
gradually blend. I'm going to try to do it one at a time. Take my time. And let's see how it goes. All right, so starting with bundled sage. I'm going to ink up my brush. Snap off a little bit and then just lightly go over. Oops, let me make sure I hold on to this. Oh, I got to get a sticky because I don't want this in my fingers. Just a second. <laughs> all right, I don't want to get my fingers all inked up here. So I think I'm going to hold on to it like this. Yeah. So this is my second card. Uh, two weeks in a row where I'm doing uh, stenciling, ink blending, using my stencils. And I like it. I figured it's a way to get myself back into, um, or it, it gives me a little bit of motivation, right? I've been on a little hiatus uh, with crafting. And uh, ink blending always gets me back into the swing of things. Because I just love to do it so much. Right? All right. So now I want to bring in my blue here. I think I want it to go a little lighter. You know, not be so heavy handed, but it's okay. This is going to be really quick. Okay, let's move that over. All right. And now I have my shaded lilac. So, oops. So let's try that. All right. These are pretty colors, and I have a boatload of distress inks. And I'm making a point this year not to uh, buy so much stuff, right? We try to utilize what's in our in our stash. So I'm gonna have to keep spending money, keep spending money. So many new products out, and the new stamps. You know, are you like that? Where when you have new stamps. You just have to get that new stamp set. Just got to get it, got to get it. I was looking, I recently, and you know, one day I may do a craft room tour. And it's not a much, um, it's not fancy or anything. I have a little area um, that I dedicate for um, crafting. Maybe I'll do a craft room uh, tour. But anyway, I organized all my stamps all of my tools. I have a little, a few uh, units up and it looks really nice. And for, I think like maybe a week and a half after I got it all organized, I just looked at it. <laughs> I didn't do any stamping or anything like that. All right, now the big reveal, right? Isn't that always exciting? Make sure my hands aren't too oily. The big reveal. Oh, I think that's cute. Right, see, it's not too much, it's just enough. And you know what? I think I may, yeah, I think I'm gonna do something uh, a little bit more. Let me get my sticky. I'm just gonna go over, I'm not gonna re ink my brushes, but I'm just gonna go over lightly with the same colors just to have that like. Ruby, not a halo, but a like a cloudy look. I guess I don't know what it's called, but just take the ink and just go over the same areas just to try to see, or just to try to get like a more of a look, so it won't be so stark white in the back, right? All right. I think I may have to put a little ink on here. Let me see. Let's see what we get. Yeah, see, I can see that ink pulling through. You have, might have to be up close to see it. It's subtle. And I like the way that looks. All right, let me do a little bit more. I'm going to go all the way up here. And do a little bit more over here. Yeah, it's kind of subtle. You can see the difference. Let me pull it up here. You see the difference? Maybe. 
It's really subtle. I like that. All right, we say we call it. Enough is enough. All right, so I'm gonna put this to the side for just a second while I clean up here. Get my inks out of the way. All right, so here is going, what it's going to be my top layer. And I want to gently peel off this tape. All right, so I like it. All right, so now what I wanna do is take this over to my die cutting machine and just die cut it out a little bit. I cut it out, see? Now, when I put the card together, it'll have a little border. Okay, right? isn't that pretty? I'm wondering if I should um cut that down a little bit. Let me uh, get my card base here. All right, again, this is 11 and a half by four and a quarter, and I'm gonna score at five, Oh, excuse me, this is 11 by four and a quarter, and I'm going to score at five and a half. All right, so let's do that. Oops. All right, and when I score, and I make that indention there, see, I fold backwards. This prevents the, um, the cracking when you fold the card in half. All right, so you fold outward or the opposite direction of the bend. Okay, so we have our A2 size card base. It's a top fold. I guess I, I could have easily uh, kept it the same size and made that, but I wanna make layers and I wanna make it a, a border. Yeah, I kind of figured that is, cause I want a smaller border. So I'm gonna cut this paper down just a little bit more because I would like to have an eighth of an inch border. These are a quarter of an inch. So I wonder if I use the next one up. What sizes are these? Can you tell me? Oh, this is four and a quarter by five and a half. That's the biggest one. So one and a quarter. So I'm gonna have to, let me see. Go in an eighth of an inch on each side. So why don't I do that now? Let's see what this looks like. And this is five and a half right there. All right, now let's see what this looks like. And all I'm doing is just trying to get good placement for my um, sentiment. So let me get the stamp. This is waffle flour. I didn't um, say that in the beginning of the video. I don't think, but this is waffle flour, big dots sentiment. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll say thanks. I'll use the thank you. You can always use a thank you card, right? I think I like that. I think I like it. I like it. All right. So I think that'll give me good placement. Yes, Versafine ink to get that nice, rich, black, um, crisp look. I'm gonna look up my stamp here. Oops, let me move this over. There we go. Can you see that? I just don't think you can see it in the frame here. There we go. So I'm inking up my stamp. Please, I hope I had good placement. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, nice and pretty. Nice and thick. I mean, rich, crisp. I like that. And I'll start to assemble the card. All right. So I have my ATG gun. I'm just going to do the top layer flat. All right, so eyeing it down works for me. All right, do I want to live raise this? No, I'm just going to keep this flat. It's a simple card, right? Just to say thank you. Okay. 
All right, now the card is almost finished. I have to put some embellishments on there. I think I may want the black ones. And these are from Altenu. They're enamel dots, black and white ones. So I think I'm going with that. All right, I'm committing, pushing it down. That's it. All right. All right, so I got my enamel dots on. I think that's pretty cute. And I want to do one more thing. Where is my Wink Estella here? I got enough on there. All right. And this is the final card. We had a little distress ink blending. You see the little sparkle there? Hopefully you can see that. My camera is falling there. All right, so that's the final card. Thank you for watching. I'll talk to you next time.